A broke mother was arraigned in court for exceeding the speed limit and her daughter joined her in court. The judge noticed the little girl and asked her if she was hungry. She replied yes. Then the judge gave a shocking verdict. As Stephanie wiped the floor of the restaurant, she held onto the mop firmly. Sweating despite the air-conditioned hall, her hands trembled from the hard work she had been doing since morning. After cleaning, she collected the dirty plates from the waiting room and took them to the washing room. Groaning, she loaded the plates into the dishwasher and started the machine. Leaning against the wall, she waited for the washing to finish before proceeding to dry the plates with a towel. Stephanie was a black woman who worked as a cleaner in a restaurant owned by a white man. She was always resilient and hardworking. The restaurant was large and had three cleaners who worked in shifts, but most of the time, Stephanie worked all through the shifts. Even though her boss had owed her back wages for three months, she strongly believed he would pay. The monthly pay was very low, so she always worked all through the day. Some of the cleaners were always considerate and let her work through their shift. They knew she needed the extra tips. After the customers were done eating, she got back to the main hall and started cleaning the floor again. That was her daily routine, and today wasn't an exception. Stephanie had worked until dusk. The other workers had gone home, leaving her to clean up the entire hallway. Afterward, there was still another round of plates to be washed. She headed to the kitchen and washed them. Her fingers were already sore and aching. After she was done washing, she heaved a sigh of relief, grabbed her stuff, and turned off the lights. Stepping out of the restaurant, she locked the doors. She breathed in relief as the cold, natural air swept on her face. Stephanie headed to her car, which was parked by the side of the garage. It was an old, worn-out and rickety car that had seen better days. It had belonged to her late husband and was still useful for transporting her to work. As she struggled with the rusty door, her phone rang. Pulling it out, she saw it was her neighbor calling. Her neighbor's frantic voice made Stephanie jerk in shock with the news that her daughter was gasping for breath and her inhaler wasn't working. Stephanie screamed into the phone, Oh my god, I'll be home shortly. She yanked the car door open and stepped inside. Peering at the fuel gauge, she hoped it would be enough to take her home. Her hands trembled as she ignited the engine, which roared to life. She turned the key, stepped on the accelerator, and the car jerked forward, crashing into the restaurant's electric billboard. Sparks flew and a deafening crash ensued, but realizing what she had done, she was in no mood to check the damage. Instead, she veered the car onto the road and drove off at high speed, praying and hoping that her daughter was safe. A few weeks ago, Stephanie had noticed that her daughter's normal inhaler didn't seem to be relieving her symptoms, so she had bought a more expensive one. She kept it at home, wanting her daughter to exhaust the former inhaler before starting on the new one. She needed to be home quickly to administer it. She pressed hard on the gas pedal, and her car moved at top speed. While driving, she heard the sound of sirens and glanced at the side mirror. She was stunned to see over three traffic policemen chasing her down. They had megaphones and were instructing her to pull over. It dawned on Stephanie that she had exceeded the speed limit. Although she knew she should stop, she was aware that the white traffic police officers might delay or even detain her, delaying her return to her daughter in distress. Prioritizing her daughter's urgent need, she decided to evade them, so she stepped hard on the accelerator. Other drivers, surprised by her speed, thought she was a criminal being pursued by the police. Stephanie knew just the street to throw the police off her trail. Driving at high speed, she swiftly turned into the next street, where the loud screeching of her tires could be heard. She heaved a sigh of relief as she entered the deserted street, which was filled with gullies. Confident that the traffic police wouldn't be able to keep up with her, she maneuvered her vehicle over the rough terrain. The tires slammed against the gullies until she finally drove out and sped back onto the road. Ten minutes later, she veered into her compound and stepped out of the car, crying out, I'm coming, baby! She pushed the door open and saw her daughter lying still on the bed, her eyes wide open and staring at the ceiling boards. Stephanie froze for a moment. Her heart pounded wildly and her pulse raced. She didn't want to believe the sight in front of her. Her neighbor was sobbing uncontrollably, telling Stephanie to take heart. Baby, don't give up on me. You can't leave me, Stephanie said as she rushed into her bedroom. She pulled out the inhaler and hurried to her daughter's side, falling to her knees. She opened the inhaler and placed it into her daughter's mouth, watching her chest, but it wasn't moving. Please, Belinda, don't do this to me, Stephanie sobbed. The girl lay still on the bed, causing Stephanie to shiver. Having lost her husband to asthma, the thought of losing her daughter was unbearable. 
Kneeling on the bed, she shook her daughter, begging her to wake up. Once again, she grabbed the inhaler and placed it into Belinda's mouth. Her eyes widened as Belinda's mouth suddenly wrapped slowly around the inhaler. Stephanie then took a deep breath, relief creeping onto her face. Stephanie helped her daughter up after a deep inhale. She then checked her grocery supplies in the kitchen. Finding only oats and no money left after buying the drugs for her daughter, Stephanie cried as she prepared the oats. She urged Belinda to eat so she could take her medication, hoping for some normalcy amidst the turmoil. Stephanie watched her little daughter chew the oats, wishing there was milk or something to make it more palatable. She was glad her daughter understood the situation. After eating, Stephanie administered Belinda's medications. Then she tidied up the room and got the little girl ready for bed, singing a sweet lullaby until Belinda smiled at her mother. I love you, mom. Thanks for today, Belinda whispered. Stephanie held her hand and kissed it, knowing she would do anything for her daughter. She remembered her phone was in the car, but was too stressed to go out and get it. Leaning on the chair, she watched her daughter until she dozed off. Stephanie jerked awake at dawn, her eyes widening in horror as she stared at the wall clock. She was late for work. Noticing her daughter wasn't in bed, she wondered where she had gone. Just then, her daughter stepped into the room, holding her phone that she had retrieved from the car. Gasping, Stephanie saw over 20 missed calls from her boss. She decided to recharge her line before calling back. As she tried to log into her mobile app, she heard some scuffles outside. Rushing out, she was shocked to see the police surrounding her car, asking about the owner. Taking a deep breath, Stephanie called to her daughter, advising Belinda not to panic. She then walked over to the police and surrendered. A female cop pinned her down and cuffed her. They informed her that she was under arrest for violating traffic rules and absconding from justice. Belinda cried out and begged the cops, but they didn't listen. Stephanie was thrown into the police car. As they drove off, she looked out the window at her daughter, wondering how long she would be detained and worried about being absent from her daughter's life. A few minutes later, they arrived at the police station, where Stephanie was taken to an office to make her statement. She explained that she'd been rushing to aid her daughter during a medical crisis. While writing her statement, Stephanie heard a familiar voice ranting at the end of the counter. It was her boss, upset about the electric billboard she had destroyed the previous day. He had gone to the police station to file a report against her. Feeling guilty, Stephanie approached her boss, admitting it was an honest mistake, but he wasn't ready to listen. After completing her statement, Stephanie was taken to the female cell. The officer in charge informed her that she would need to spend 48 hours there due to a public holiday the next day, meaning court would not be in session. Stephanie knew she was unable to afford a lawyer. She would be left at the mercy of the state. Inside the cell, she spent her time worrying about her daughter and what would happen if she was sentenced to jail. After what felt like an eternity, an officer opened her cell door and informed her that an adult and a girl were there to see her. Realizing it must be Belinda and her neighbor, Stephanie felt a rush of relief. She was uncuffed and walked over to the waiting room. Stephanie met Belinda and her neighbor Nellie in the visiting room, separated by a large glass that prevented any physical contact, allowing only their voices to bridge the gap. Belinda saw her mom and broke into tears. For a moment, mother and daughter stared at each other without saying anything. Their bodies trembled with pure emotions. Mom, I don't want to lose you. I don't want you to go to jail, Belinda cried. The pain was overwhelming for both of them. Stephanie explained the circumstances that led to her arrest, assuring Belinda that everything would be fine, despite knowing the reality was far from fine. She wanted to instill hope in her daughter. As their time together drew to a close, an officer approached and informed Stephanie that her visiting time was over. Belinda cried intensely, watching her mother being led away. When Belinda and Nellie got home, Nellie prepared a dish of salad, which Belinda reluctantly ate and then took her medication. However, her thoughts were consumed with worry about her mother and the upcoming court case. Nellie and Belinda arrived at the courthouse very early on the day of the hearing. When the bailiff called Stephanie's name, Belinda's reaction was visceral. She gasped upon seeing her mother being led into the dock. Overcome by emotion, Belinda ran from her seat and joined her mother in the dock. The courtroom was taken aback by her actions. Court officials tried to remove her, but she resisted, tearfully declaring that she was the reason for her mother's predicament and insisted on staying by her side in the dock. The emotional display touched everyone in the courtroom as Belinda clung to her mother's hand, 
declaring that she would go to jail with her if necessary. The room fell silent, everyone absorbed in the poignant moment between mother and daughter. The judge, visibly moved, instructed the officials to let Belinda stay. He then cleared his throat and directed the bailiff to read out Stephanie's charges, which included vandalism of private property, speeding, and evading arrest. After the charges were stated, the judge looked at Stephanie and asked her if she acknowledged her guilt. Stephanie admitted to all the charges. Recognizing the gravity of the moment, the judge then gave her the chance to explain her actions. In court, Stephanie cleared her throat and addressed the circumstances behind her actions. She recounted how she'd panicked upon learning of her daughter's health crisis at home, explaining that in her haste and shock, she had inadvertently collided with the restaurant's electric billboard. Stephanie admitted to speeding in an effort to reach her daughter quickly. She also confessed that upon hearing the police sirens, fear had gripped her, fearing further delays. She stressed that her decisions were solely driven by the urgent need to save her daughter and emphasized that she was not in the right state of mind at the time. The judge adjusted his spectacles and directed his attention to the young girl. He then sifted through his files and requested the police to present the case report. The bailiff handed over the investigation reports to the judge, who then called Stephanie's boss to the stand. Mr. Albert, a tall and frail man with an imposing presence, entered the dock and met the judge's gaze. The judge questioned him about his failure to relocate the billboard despite repeated orders from law enforcement. The wrong positioning of the billboard made it easier for Stephanie to hit it. He stated that Stephanie would not be held responsible for the damage caused to the billboard due to his negligence in heeding police advice. Additionally, the judge inquired about why Mr. Albert had withheld Stephanie's wages for three months despite the restaurant's high sales. Mr. Albert responded, claiming that he was using the funds to repay a loan. The judge dismissed Mr. Albert and turned his attention to Stephanie, informing her that she was required to pay a $300 fine for reckless driving. Stephanie tearfully pleaded that she was not financially capable of paying the fine, especially considering her daughter's ongoing health crisis. Observing the solemn expression on Belinda's face, the judge called out to her in a gentle tone, and she approached him. As he looked into Belinda's blue eyes, he remarked that she reminded him of his own granddaughter. Addressing Belinda, the judge explained that she had the authority to determine her mother's fate at that moment. He presented her with two options, either pay half of the fine as agreed upon or send her mother to jail for three months. The courtroom fell silent as all eyes were fixed on Belinda. Clearing her throat, Belinda pleaded with the judge for a lighter sentence. She explained that her mother wouldn't be able to afford half the fine as she was still paying off medical bills. Belinda requested that the judge allow them more time to gather the funds to pay $100 instead. She asserted that the blame lay with her, not her mother, and suggested that if anyone deserved punishment, it was her because of her asthma. Touched by Belinda's plea and emotional maturity, the judge expressed compassion, affirming that illness was not a crime. He commended Belinda for her compassion and understanding. The judge then issued two directives. He instructed Mr. Albert to relocate the billboard to a safer location and settle all outstanding debts owed to Stephanie. Turning his attention to Belinda, he asked, Are you hungry? Belinda confirmed that she was indeed hungry, prompting the judge to inquire if she liked salmon stew for breakfast. Belinda eagerly nodded in agreement, expressing her love for seafood, although she was aware that her mother was not financially capable of preparing such a meal for her. The judge picked up the gavel, causing everyone in the courtroom to hold their breath. Stephanie's heart pounded against her chest as she awaited the verdict. Stephanie, the judge declared, you are hereby sentenced to prepare seafood breakfast for Belinda. Stephanie sighed in relief, feeling immensely happy. Belinda excitedly ran and hugged her mom tightly. The judge's decision demonstrated that the law could show kindness to those who are victims of circumstances. Stephanie made sure she honored the judge's directive. That weekend, she prepared a sumptuous seafood meal for Belinda. Although it wasn't rich, Belinda ate to her fill. She simply appreciated the intent behind her mother's actions. What do you think about the judge's verdict? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.